here we get a lot of questions on codes uh, IRC codes roofing codes this is for Jefferson County uh, we're actually going to go over the roofing codes for the IRC 2009 which is what they currently use uh, scope just discusses code uh, crickets and saddles that's a common uh, on the older houses they don't have this a lot of times uh, if your chimney for instance 30 inches wide uh, we need to put a cricket or saddle behind it to divert the water away from it. Uh, what you're looking at next, this is a hail exposure map. Uh, you have moderate and severe. Severe being lower in the lower states, you know, around Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma. And moderate is in part of the Missouri area. Um, but what that's going to tell you is some of the requirements that you may need on your, on your roof. Uh, your fasteners. Right here it'll show they should go three quarters of an inch through the sheathing. So if you've got uh, shingles on, you got some 5 8 plywood, you need to use at least an inch and a quarter nail. Uh, attachments, you need at least four fasteners in a shingle, uh, six in high wind areas, or to get the maximum wind warranty from the manufacturer in most cases. Uh, underlayment we're talking about here is uh, we have low you have what's called low slopes and steep slopes even though a roof only has a, a 212 pitch which means it drops 2 inches and 12 inches it's still considered a steep slope roof uh, but anything under a 412 you're going to need double felt uh, basin cap flashing is normal valleys we run into a lot of issues with valleys <clears throat> a lot of roofers or contractors think you can just overlay the felt and that's a good valley liner but it's not according to code you have three choices uh, you have open valleys uh, with metal that pretty much open valleys with uh, like a mineral or a, a roll roofing that's been adhered together to double it up and you have closed valleys which is what's common with architectural shingles, three tap shingles. Underneath there you should have, uh, you can use ASTMD 1970 which is basically an ice and water shield. Uh, you can use a, a 90 pound roll roofing uh, that's been adhered with an additional piece. It's considered a modified bitumen pretty much at that point. Uh, but just overlaying felt is not an acceptable valley liner. Uh, that was common back in the 70s and 80s, even the 90s. But nowadays, you've just got people that don't know any don't know any better, so that's what they're still doing. Sidewall flashings. We run into this issue a lot. Uh, you need to replace step flashing. Step flashing is going to have holes in it once it's been used once. It needs to be replaced. Uh, a lot of times, builders will cut corners and not pay attention, or you'll just have the uh, have them putting step flashing and there won't be any base flashing underneath to help divert the water and especially if you have any ice damming or snow build up on that area and what we have here uh, most roof spans now trusses especially uh, pre-manufactured trusses uh, 24 inch spans on the roof 5 eighths is the minimum decking you should be using on roofs these days uh, especially since uh, either 03 or 06 we see a, a lot of half inch 3 8 inch decking uh, it's just simply not acceptable the construction is not strong enough uh, the, if it gets damaged uh, it's done um, and that's pretty much everything that covers the roofs um, should always replace your flashings the uh, skylights if you've had a skylight on a roof for more than more than four or five years the seals are probably going to leak when you do a re-roof uh, Velux the skylight manufacturer uh, actually sent out a bulletin saying that they uh, would definitely recommend replacing all skylights that are older uh, I can't remember the exact year but older than four, five or six years because the uh, rubber seals on them will leak uh, just from the shifting and moving and uh, vibration from uh, re-roof. Uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this helps clarify some of the issues that uh, you may have or questions on your roof. Thank you.